What's up guys? It's the hybrid camper guy and we're back finally spring camping season of 2022 And what I have today is a video that I have been requested for a long time and what I've been thinking about all winter That is a happy happy day, but a lot of us get lost It's time to de-winterize our camper and we're only gonna need two simple things Some household bleach Some distilled white vinegar Red Bull's optional. For me, it's a must. <laughs> and obviously, a some hose. water. So if you remember our video in the, in the fall, uh, we put antifreeze inside of the trailer and it's all through our lines right now. So what we have to do is flush it out and then we have to sanitize it. That's what the bleach is for. And then to get rid of the bleach and neutralize the smell, that's what the white vinegar is for. Really simple process, but it's very, very time consuming. So make sure you have a day planned for this or you have a good couple hours to do it right. And if you do, your water system will be clean, it'll be fresh, and it'll be enjoyable for your season. So stay with us. Alrighty guys, so step one is we're gonna go to our freshwater fill. In this case, we're gonna do our tank because that's where we put the antifreeze. We're gonna take the hose and we're gonna fill her up. And we're gonna put right now, maybe a minute or two's worth of water, not a ton. At this point, we're just going to be flushing out the pink stuff. All right, guys, step two. We're gonna come inside over here to our water pump. You guys know specifically where your water pump switch is, but this is ours. We're gonna turn the pump on and we're gonna let it pressurize. And we are pressurized. Goodbye. Oh, you know what? We're gonna move the, uh, the key trap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nancy. Nancy. All righty. And now you kind of play the waiting game. We're just gonna let all this piss out. It's not necessarily going to run clear yet at all. We just wanna get what's in the lines and what's in the tank out. So I'm gonna run the majority of it through here. Then I'm also gonna go to my other faucet in the bathroom and I will get the majority of it out there. And then we're gonna come back on to step three. regular water and alternate faucets, letting the water run through the water pump and flush out the system. Now we're going to go on to our next step, which is adding our bleach. So you're going to go ahead, you're going to add a couple cap pools. I do a good little gulp. And we're going to pour it right in. I do not have my funnel. This is going to depend on your size water tank. I did just about a little overkill. Now, we take the water. We're gonna go ahead and we are going to fill our water tank all the way up. And we're gonna get to the next step. All right, guys, now we have our fresh water tank all the way filled up with fresh water and a mixture of bleach. So, what we're gonna do now is go ahead and turn our water pump back on and pressure excuse me, and pressurize. And we're going to turn on each faucet and we're going to let it run until there's a nice stream until you smell the bleach. You want to smell the bleach. Mmm, you're smelling. I'm getting 
though. Nothing yet. Nothing. Any day now. <laughs> I want to come in here to our next faucet, very similar to dewinterizing that we did in the fall. Toilet, not super important, but we'll still make sure that we run it and we get some water in there. Then we're going to go to our sink, let it run for a couple seconds. Lots and lots of fun here. want to run it just better to be safe than sorry most of us here have about 20 gallon tanks so it's okay to use a little bit of the water we just want to run it through here and make sure all that bleach and fresh water is through each of our faucets spigots and shower heads I like said toilets optional but shut that down we're gonna go ahead and we're going to do our tub. We're going to wait about a minute here. Stop giving them. They make people sick. And turn on the shower head. Definitely make sure we get it through there. Plastic, right? No, this one's metal. Oh, we upgraded. We have a whole video about this. Alright, I forgot. This is now metal. Stainless steel. Stainless steel. Oh, I smell something. Yep. All right, now the last one we're gonna be doing, guys, will be our outside shower, but I'm not gonna show you that because unfortunately it is getting dark, but we do need to complete this tonight. So after you have the mixture of bleach and water ran through all of your systems, you wanna keep it pressurized, keep your water pump on, you're gonna to wanna to let that sit in your lines for at least an hour. You can do it longer if you want. I've done anywhere between one hour, two hour, three hours, that's completely up to you, but at least one hour you wanna sit that in the line and then we'll get back to the next step. Alrighty guys, and we're back. I know it sounds repetitive, but we're on to the third, fourth, fifth, the next step. We ran the Clorox through the lines. We let it sit in there for about an hour and a half. We drained all of it out. Now what I went ahead and did, and as I said, I apologize, it is dark outside, so I'm not recording outside. We went ahead and we filled our water tank all the way back up with just nothing but fresh water. We're gonna go ahead and turn our water pump on. And now we are going to flush all the bleach out of the lines. And that's it again, we're gonna go to each faucet. We're gonna turn each one on for a couple of minutes, turn it off, go to the next faucet, turn it on for a couple of minutes, and let all the water drain out of that tank. And then we'll be back with the next step. Alrighty guys, now it's time to add the vinegar. We're gonna go out. I'm gonna add just about the full bottle and we're gonna fill the tank all the way up. And we're gonna run it through all the lines, let it pressurize. Now let it sit in the lines for one to two hours. This stuff does a great job at neutralizing the bleach. After that one to two hours, you're gonna go ahead and run it completely out of your lines. Let's get to it. Alrighty guys, and now we are at the final step. So I'm at the back of my hot water heater. The back of your hot water heater will vary in where it is. Uh, mine is behind my cabinets. So as I'm filling up for the final time after flushing the tank twice after the vinegar, complete fill up. You can actually see the water filling up again right now. Complete fill up, complete drain out of each faucet uh, equally. Complete fill up, 
and then complete drain out of each faucet. We're going to go ahead and we're going to get rid of the bypass. So right now the bypass is engaged when the valve is parallel to the line, that means the valve is open. When it is perpendicular to the line, that means it is closed. So we are going to go ahead and we're going to open and open. This white is the inlet, the red out is the outlet. And then we are going to close the bypass, very important. If you don't close the bypass, you will have lukewarm water. Make sure you close the bypass. This right here is how your valve should look in summer mode, complete opposite in winter mode. So now that they are open, we're gonna go ahead and we are going to fill the hot water tank, but we are not going to turn it on. Alrighty, and how we do that is we are going to turn the hot water on. This will allow the hot water heater to purge all the air out of it. And you want to do this before every camping trip. Go ahead and turn our water pump on. And this will now begin to fill our hot water tank. Daddy. Now, when we see this thing huffing and puffing and spitting and hissing, that's when you know that the hot water heater is filled. Alrighty. And after a good couple minutes, this is what you'll start seeing. Huffing, puffing, hissing. And once we get a solid, steady stream, that means our hot water heater is completely filled and all the air is purged. That is right you're looking for right there. And you wanna do this before every camping trip. Before, right, that doesn't make sense. At the beginning. So now we're gonna go ahead and shut it off. Our water pump will turn off. We're going to actually manually shut it off now to relieve the pressure, okay? So to relieve the pressure, we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn that faucet back on after the pump's on. And I do apologize, we're about to go outside just so I can show you this. And it is dark, so it will be hard to see. But we let most of the pressure out of the line. And at this point, we're pretty much just filling and draining the hot water heater. Uh, you know, just to get any contaminants that have been in there over the winter. So we're gonna go ahead to our valve. Again, if you guys have the uh, plastic cap, you're gonna wanna go ahead and use a hex head to remove it. I have the quick valve from Camco. And we're gonna go ahead and release. Ugh, sorry, it's a little hard to get to in there. We're gonna go ahead and open that valve up. There we go all the way and then remember this is just like a bottle it will not drain any water unless it has a way to let air into it so we're going to pop open the pressure relief valve to the open position and now we got the gurgles and the water is draining so we're going to go ahead and we're going to let the hot water heater completely drain then we're going to go ahead and fill it again and then turn it on for the first time this year to make sure everything works so Back in the next video. All right, guys. So now that we have completed the water system, the next thing we're going to do is test the other systems that we have inside of our trailer. So we're going to start with the first thing, which is propane. Now I have both my tanks turned on in the front, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to purge the air out of the lines. Now this needs to be done every time you go to camp. And this will affect your other appliances in the RV. I have people message me and say, hey, my fridge isn't lighting on propane or my hot water heater comes on, but then it blows right out. It has the infamous red check engine light. Well, this is why. So what we're going to go ahead and do is you're going to turn your burner on. I can hear propane coming out and I have an automatic sparker. If you don't use your lighter, there we go. We're looking for a nice bright blue flame. We're gonna turn another burner on, boom. And our last burner, boom. So now that we have nice bright blue flames, we have purged all the air out of the propane line. That means there is propane at all the appliances in the RV. So we can go ahead after a couple seconds, we can shut these guys off. And the first thing we're going to check is our furnace especially since it's getting a little cold in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my temperature. It is eh, 65 right now. So we're gonna go ahead and turn it, I don't know, about 72-ish. Go and go ahead, flip it on. And we're going to make sure it lights. Now it's pre-staging right now. I don't know if you'll be able to hear the igniter click on. 
There's the igniter. And we have ignition. Now that works. The next thing we're going to check is our refrigerator. So we're going to go ahead and put it in gas mode. So gas mode, if you see, is the button pressed outward. Um, in would be auto. So we're gonna go ahead and press the button out, which we're now in gas mode. We're gonna go ahead and hit on. It's cycling through. And then shortly it will ignite. You can also go ahead and you can check your oven if you so please. But you just want to go ahead, go around, make sure you don't smell any gas. Now's a good time to also check your, uh, I'm going to press and hold. Was it press and hold? There we go. Check our smoke alarm. Check our LP detector. Now our LP detector did take a crap over the winter. It is dead. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to have to replace this one. Um, I'm going to find the same one so it fits in the spot nicely so we don't have to drill any holes but this one did die um, they are only good for seven to ten years you need to check the date on them and this one is definitely dead um, that's just what happens with them the, the green flashing light is us is it letting us know so that is it for checking the LP system the other things we can do is go ahead and I've already checked my air conditioner, I've checked the radio, I've checked the microwave, and just checking all the power systems, making sure that our fuse panel is all good, nothing popped, nothing shorted, and that it is charging our battery, which it is. I have another video on how to tell if your inverter is putting out power, um, which you can use a simple multimeter for on your battery, positive, negative, make sure it's putting out above 12 and a half volts, 13 half to 14 volts is what it should be putting out pretty much the same as alternator in a car uh, to make sure it's working well alrighty guys and just like that we're on our last steps we went ahead and we flushed out the hot water heater we let it drain completely and then I refilled it up as you can see here put it to the hot we have full pressure on that side and that's what we want and that's what we want to do before we light it you do not want to do a dry fire in a hot water heater Definitely, definitely not good. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna press the magic button. We're gonna run outside and we're gonna test and make sure that it fires okay. Excuse me, before you do this, you want to check your burner tube and make sure that there's no mud dauber's nests because they love the smell of propane. Um, and make sure there's no bird's nest or anything weird like that in your exhaust tube of the hot water heater, also in the exhaust tube of the furnace and or in and around the refrigerator, uh, which could lead to a fire, which would not be good, which we did check. There is nothing out there. So we're going to go ahead and hit the magic button. We're going to run outside. We're going to make sure it fires, make sure it goes all the way up to temperature. It gets fully hot. And then you are finally done with the winterization. So let's do it. Go inside, it's gonna have the air light on. Oh, she's gonna try again. Nope. She's just purging the air out of the system. She's gonna try one more time. Guys, this is completely normal. Especially at the beginning of the season. Hear that the igniter stopped firing, which means it does sense a flame. And you also notice how quiet this flame is and how nice and blue it is. This is exactly the flame you want. I do have another video showing how you adjust it with the airflow meter, which is right here. If you guys want to see a complete how to video on how to adjust the airflow, of your hot water heater. It is based on elevation, but typically it should not need to be adjusted, but some people do want to mess with them. Uh, so at this point, we're gonna wait for the hot water heater to get fully warm, make sure that there is no other issues with it until it cuts off and make sure that the thermostat is functioning as it should. 
And just like that, guys, we're all done and our water system is dewinterized. Now, I know this has been a quick, probably 10 or maybe 15 minute video for you, but this has been a long five or six hours for us. It is a long process. Make sure you have the time and make sure you do it right. And your water system will be sanitized. It will not smell and it will function as it should. This is the, in my opinion, right way to do it. This is the way I've been doing it for my entire life. Like I said, I grew up on boats. This is the way I was taught by other boaters, campers. And uh, this is the way that's always worked for me. And I wanted to pass the information on to you guys, especially because I've had a lot of requests on winterizing and de-winterizing your camper. A lot of questions on the hot water heater bypass and how to set your camper up. And also, like I showed you, to purge all the air from your hot water heater before you light it. So that's a quick video on how to de-winterize the water system. We'll have a lot more videos this year. If you guys like this, give me a like. Uh, comment down below if you want to see anything else. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to message me. Let me know what videos you guys want to see this year. I'll be doing videos on cleaning, on cleaning the air conditioning coils, big one that people forget about, uh, on waxing, buffing, checking your seals, going over the seals between self-leveling, non-leveling, uh, non-sag, all different kinds of sealants and everything like that to get your camper ready for the spring season. I'm happy to see everyone following me. I've gotten a couple subscribers over the winter. I do appreciate that, guys. I want the summer to be the best one so far. We have new camera equipment. We plan on going to new campgrounds, checking out some new campers. So I'm really, really excited. It's time for the video season. Yet again, I'm back. I love you all so much. Like I said, leave a comment down below. Anything you want to know, I will answer. And with that, we'll see you next time.